today's been one of these days and actually been one of these weeks. Now let me tell you something. For you that know me, all I know how to be is Mike Price. Not once have you people ever heard me get up here and talk about how great I am. I get attitudes. I mean some attitudes. And I, you know, I can deal with a lot of things. But me, I got to be true to myself. Because I'm gonna, if you don't get nothing else out of this service, if you can't be true to yourself, and I know people get on to me, they say, I, I cuss, I, I do all this. Just listen to the sermon and get to the end of it before you jump out and leave. If you can't be true to yourself, there's no way in hell you're going to be true to God. If you can't be true to yourself. Because all you have is you. You won't give account for your kids, your husband, your wife, your pastor, your Sunday school teacher, and some of you 45-year-olds that's still in the third grade, you won't give account for that teacher neither. That's a joke. Mark looked at me like, what are you picking on me for? Sorry, brother. She gave me a dollar to say that. You don't doubt that, do you? <laughs> but I've been blessed to have some awesome people around me. And trash ministry... is totally redeemed, anointed servants of the Most High. We ain't going nowhere. <clears throat> I might get this, might not. This is my quarter. We've been to hell and back in this ministry. We have. Amen, guys? And every single time, God has showed up and showed off. Every single time. And mom, I can't, I've been, Sister Kate been, Aunt Kate been on my mind a lot lately. I love that precious saint of God. She'd get up there, up in age. Lord God, she's in her 80s, wasn't she? And she'd still sing, but she, I never forget that phrase. It just keeps on getting gooder and gooder and gooder. Amen. And you know, we get, make, we get to make choices with what goes on in our lives. You may not be in control of what starts it, but you get choices to make. And I didn't dig this verse out I'm about to read because I was smart. It was just my verse, my verse on BibleGateway.com this morning. And turn with me to put my glasses on. Psalms chapter 13. Psalms chapter 13, it's a long one, about six verses, I'm going to read them all. You know, I don't know, how many of you, be honest, I mean, if you don't believe it, don't believe it, don't raise your hand, just impress me. How many believe you can hear from God? Sometimes you, you think it's an audible voice, other times he speaks through somebody, sometimes he's just... You just cut a stinking computer on and finally see something worth looking at on there. This was on my Bible, my gateway.com this morning. I got down in the basement, and I kept reading it. And I said, I've read this thing, I've read this thing, and I've read this Bible. And Psalm, uh, Psalms all to death, and I've never once stopped to understand chapter 13. But the Bible says, you got it up there, we ain't got them on, do we? Psalms 13, the Bible, and I'm reading from the NLT. O oh Lord, how long will you forget me? Forever? How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart? He asked the question every day. How long will my enemy have the upper hand. Verse 3. Turn and answer me, O Lord, my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes. 
or I would die. Don't let my enemies gloat saying we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. Verse 5. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. And verse 6. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. Wow. With all the things that's happening in your life, how long do I keep holding on? How long? You know when you're in the heat of the battle, and I know tonight's going to be a little bit different. Hang on, I might get wound up, might not. But in the heat of the battle, you've got to understand some things. There's going to be setbacks at times. You ain't going to hear just right. You might, take, you might misstep. You might throw a right hook when you should have threw a left jab. You know? Come on, I know you bikers, y'all have all been pearly white, little innocent people, little white suits on, the saint hood that I've got my crown of glory and I've never sinned since I've been saved. So get your angel wings off. Get your little white robe off. You ain't made it yet. We still walk around in dirty garments. Talking about this flesh. It's sinful by nature. I know a lot of doctrines, a lot of organizations teach you can get saved. Well, I like for one of them to tell me, why does God send it to the dust of the earth if it got saved? I sure would like to have the answer to that one. You get taught a lot of junk in this world. But going through things, you're going to make mistakes. And when you realize that you're not the only one, and you begin to realize that your pastor is telling you that he makes mistakes, all of my words don't go through the sanctification. Yours might. God bless you. Amen. At least I got enough grit to say it. And I'm here to tell you, but sometimes when you realize you're not the only one in battle, then there's some hope there. Now let me explain this to you. I'm a U.S. Marine. No Marine was trained to go it alone. And we trained not to leave a wounded behind or a dead. We was trained to count on each other, that we had each other's backs. We could trust that man in that old olive drab looking miserable green uniform that he had your back. Because in the Marine Corps, they taught us one thing. Your blood, your veins got Marine Corps green blood in them. And everybody around you, you got to depend on, and everybody around you depends on you. <clears throat> because when you get in the heat of the battle, you got to trust the man on the left flank are doing their job. you got to trust the men on the right flank are doing their job. you got to trust that your sight and that aim is true. And you got to know that you prepared for this battle. You've got to understand that you've cleaned your weapon. You've went to the target range and learned how to fire this thing. And you knew your aim was true. So you don't miss and hit somebody that you love. I'm going to get there. But when you're in that battle, when you're in that battle, sometimes, just sometimes, you need to look at your brother or your sister and say, help me take the next step because the way's getting kind of rough. But I'm not going to back up. I'm not going to surrender. And I'm not going to give up because I know where my strength comes from. And it comes from the Lord. And when there's two of us, we can put a whole lot more devils to flight in the name of Jesus than one of us can. How long? How long, oh Lord? Will you not hear me? How long will you forsake me? The psalmist, King David, man's talking through hurt knowledge. He's talking through lustful eyes. He's talking through a man who do done adultery. He's talking from a man that had killed somebody, had him killed. King David. I know what's wrong with me. Y'all hang on. You hang on to this kryptonite. It's getting me too weak. It's an inside joke. 
they got a green rock and they come up and Ricky said, here, Sherman gave me this kryptonite and he wanted me to give it to you. <laughs> and I felt like Superman, it was weighing me down. <laughs> Some of y'all get it later. Some of you don't even know who Superman is. I, I, it's not Shaquille O'Neal. It's Clark Kent. I know the secret. But when you're in the heat of the battle and you don't know what else to do, and sometimes you can't see the way because of the brokenness you've got. Sometimes you can't hear from God because the heaviness of your breathing, they're just trying to survive. And sometimes, sometimes you don't even hear death or able to give out a distress, SOS, save my soul, if you allow me to say it that way. Call because you're choked up trying to reach for victory. But let me tell you something. The God that David was talking about is always a God that's just on time. See, God has a purpose for your life. We're not going through the emotions of being saved just to be saved. We are saved according to his will and his purpose for our lives. But sometimes to get to where you're going, you're going to have to go through straight hell. You're going to think everybody's forsaken you. You're going to feel like God has forsaken you. You're going to feel like you're standing alone. But let me tell you something. I don't care what you're going through because when the dust settles and when all the commotion stops and you open your eyes and you look, you're surrounded by thousands upon thousands of hosts of heaven that's been fighting your battles for you. And sometimes you just got to let go and let God. God be God and trust the outcome. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because sometimes in the battles it gets heavy. And when you don't know who you can trust, God help you. Because see, you got to watch out or the enemy will creep in unaware, the Bible teaches us. And it says, watch everyone that says, Lord, Lord, or brother, brother, because they don't all mean it. But he said we would be known by the fruit that we bear. And you best start looking at who's surrounding you and see if that fruit that they're bearing lines up with the Word of God. Mm, I know that stings, but it's supposed to. Because... If their fruit is bearing some fruit that you've never recognized before, you need to get away from it. You need to guard yourself. Now let me go to an old part of preaching that nobody uses no more. Husbands and daddies. This, don't get offended, sisters. I'm going to preach here for a minute, though. You are the spiritual leader of your home. Now, if the men are too weenified, too sissified, and too weak back to do it, lead on, sisters. Get a hold of it and run on. But you men, that's supposed to be spiritual leaders, which means that's a type of a high priest in your home. You lead the battle, the first one to hit your knees. Mm, gosh, y'all stick with me on here. See, most of you know what we're going through. A lot of you do anyway. Men as a Marine want to do it one way, but I'm restrained by the bonds of this Bible and the priesthood that I have to be. And it binds me up, and sometimes I forget that I don't have to fight it in the flesh because I can go to my knees, and that's my strongest position of battle because when I'm on my knees, I'm talking to my God, and I'm saying, God, why hast thou forsaken me when my enemy's encamped about me? But then God shows up, and my enemy is scattered, and we stand up in total victory. That's who we are as blood-bought Christians. We have overcome through the witness and the testimony of our faith. Can I get somebody to say amen? If I'm too loud, you're too old. If you come expecting now, lay me down to sleep type preaching, you're in the wrong place. We all preach loud. Most of these old bikers, we can't hear good. You Honda boys ain't had it so rough. Glenn said, repeat it. I ain't never been on no Honda. <laughs> but see, when you begin to look at what David was talking about, hmm, I want to take you to 2 Samuel chapter 6 real quick. 
David decided to move the Ark of the Covenant. And he got his, I think it was 30,000, 30,000 of his best warriors. And how you become the best warrior? You're seasoned. These ain't guys out of boot camp. These guys have known some stuff and seen some stuff. And he got 30,000 of his best people. He got some musicians. I don't know what all them instruments are in the Old Testament. For some of you, it might have been a banjo. Say amen. The rest of us, ooh. But anyway, I kind of feel like music back then was hard rock music. Get it? All rock? Never mind. So, y'all figure that out. But he got his, he got his band together. You liked it, did you? You got it. I got to quit looking at me. I'm smiling. You're going to get messed up. Hard rock. Yeah, man. But he got it all together. And they got a brand new cart. And they set the ark. And I, I'm, I'm leaving out a lot. I'm just giving you a little version of this thing. And they set the new ark upon this wagon. And they begin to leave. And they got pretty close to one place. They said, and I can't pronounce all these names, but I'll get a couple names here in a minute. But one of the oxen stumbled. And the ark teetered. Now some people say Uzziah, Uzra, Ezra, Ozra, how you want to pronounce his name. Reached out and touched it to steady it. Now let me show you the, how, the conditions of God, how he calls us to do stuff. When God tells you something, he gives you distinct instructions. Not fuzzy, wuzzy, was a bear instruction. He gives you distinct instructions that you don't have to guess how to do something. And they knew they couldn't touch that thing. And as it stumbled, he put his hand and touched it. And God got so angry that the Bible said he killed him. Well, King David got upset because he killed his buddy. So he left this thing at a friend's house. Study it out. Obedidam, something like that. How you say it, Gary? How you pronounce his name? Obedidam, Obedidam, or what his name is? Who is it? Yeah, that sounds close enough. We'll call, for my sake, we're going to call him Obi. <laughs> and David and them left. But they heard about the blessings of God at Obi's place. So David went to get it. I want what's in that thing upon my place. And the Bible teaches you that David pitched a tent for it and set it all up, and they went after it. But here's David. He's got his best 30,000 warriors with him. And when you study scriptures, David was the greatest war leader that Israel ever had. The dude knew, just knew how to bring victory. And here's 30,000. 30, can you imagine that? You'd have to have a heck of a sanctuary. 30,000 seasoned veterans. And they see home. And the band is playing. And David's so excited, the Bible says he's dancing and leaping for joy. I'm going to get where I'm going. Hang on here. They get that place and in, in, get the ark where it's supposed to be. David's having the time of his life. Now his wife looks out the bedroom window. And her old king was dancing. I mean, just dancing. Whatever you guys say, getting your groove on, or whatever his junk is. I mean, he was moving it all. She got so mad at him. How many of you have ever experienced that from you? Don't raise your hands, guys. Don't raise your hands. No. We don't have enough time to fix these marriages. <laughs> but she was angry because he was dancing. I want to stop here and go back to what I was preaching a minute ago. When you're in battles, 
God is not only testing you and trying you, but he is preparing you for a season of blessings and outpouring that all you can do is rejoice and dance. Are you listening to me? Trash Ministries, we've been to hell and back in the burden of this thing. And many of you have been with me for a lot of years, and we've seen a lot of changes. We've seen our ups and downs, and we've seen growth, and we've seen small, and we see this thing birthed and getting ready to do something. Other chapters are branching out, and all this stuff is going on. Well, we've got to be smart enough that the devil ain't going to just let us burp and keep on enlarging ourselves. That's going to be a good fight. Now, I can only imagine that all those soldiers he had with him, how they felt when they left home the first time to fight the enemy. But David, back in his youthfulness, back when the, the, the children of Israel was bent down because there was a big old giant all of them were scared of, David, his daddy said, listen, take some lunch to the boys and check on them. Now, I'm giving you a fast version, Mike Christ 101. And he went through the hard, Hardy's drive-thru, got some food, and took off. Not really because he didn't have Hardy, but he got the food. And he gets up there, and all these warriors are hunkered down because of one person. Because of one person. Because of one person. David looked over. Well, he ain't so bad. He don't look so tough. Well, he's a little big, but gosh, anything you throw, you're going to hit him. David wasn't scared. But the men around him, and King Saul found out he had one that was willing to go over the wall. And all of a sudden he sees little David. David was small, study the scriptures. And he sees David, and here King Saul is head and shoulders above everybody in his camp. And here comes little David. I can do it. But Saul was so ecstatic. And so joyful that one man had enough grit and that uh, would climb over the wall. Well, I, I will remind you of the title of this. How long do I keep holding on? These men was holding on for dear life. But here David looks at it through different eyes. He don't look so tough. He ain't, I mean, he's big. He's loud. But listen, you know what? I've got this. But David... You can't go out there with no armor on. And so they put Saul's armor on. Now David's a little ruddy guy. King Saul's head and shoulders above everybody. So he looked like RDT, D2, one of his name would be, you know. And he's trying to walk clinking and clanking. Hold on, guys. I can't wear this over there. It's not been tried and true with me. I've not been battling him. I, when I fought the bow and the line, I didn't have no armor on. I trusted in what I know. He, he went down and got us some stones, jumped over the wall. And that one person began to laugh and mock him. Stop here for a minute. So many Christians, so many Christians today are ashamed to be called a Christian now because you don't want someone to make fun of you. You're afraid someone's going to get upset with you. You're afraid someone may not like you. Listen, honey, if you want to hang out with a man's hated the whole lot, hang out with me. You'll get used to it. But let me tell you something. But in the heat of the battle, you're going to find out that there's more with you than ever is against you, even if it's the host of heaven. And let me tell you something, devil, the host of heaven is enough. Amen. So David jumps over the wall. You know the story. I've used this a lot. David wins. David wins. But all of a sudden, he's got this ark. They place it under that tent. And he's dancing and rejoicing. Some might think he's dancing and rejoicing because he got it at home. I'm sure that had something to do with it. I'm thinking, this is just Mike Price. I, I've studied these scriptures for years. This is what I'm thinking, guys. This is what I'm thinking. Of all the battles, been persecuted by Saul. Saul wanted to kill him. And all the things that went wrong in his life. All of a sudden, here's a king. Now stick with me. Here's a king that's got the ark of the covenant of God in this tent. He was rejoicing because he knew he had a season to rejoice 
in. Are you listening to me? I'm telling you right now, trash ministry, guys, we are entering into a season that we're going to lay the armor down for a little bit and enter into a season of rejoicing that we can dance in front of God Almighty. So the question is, how long do I hold on? It'll take as long as till you jump over the wall and slay that giant. I'm thankful for the people in my life. I'm honored to be blessed by people in my life. I'm honored to be allowed to minister to you guys and girls. You ain't never been here before. I say my chewing gum's too expensive to buy new pieces all the time. But see, David also was rejoicing and dancing. With 30,000 of his best seasoned warriors. I look in this room this night. I can dance in victory because I'm surrounded by, maybe not all of you, but I say pretty close to all of you. Love me and stand with me through the storms and the times of season of battle. And now we're getting ready to enter the season of refreshing that we can dance. I hope y'all getting a hold of what I'm preaching tonight. I've not had no time to study the past two days. It's been hell on earth. I got down here early, and it's been one person after another in the office, and I barely even got my Bible marked before I walked out. But see, some of you are in such bondage that you're thinking right now, I wish I could get into a season of refreshing too. You say, Brother Mike, how do I defeat that enemy? How do I slay him? The hardest thing for anybody to do in the world. This is, and I'm going to lay a word on it. It's the hardest thing for anybody to do in the world. But if you can comprehend this spiritually, you're going to have the breakthrough you've been looking for for years. If you can just be loyal to him. Remember I said in the beginning, if you can't be loyal to yourself. I've preached this whole sermon to come back to the same part. I gave you this and dismissed. But you wouldn't have gripped it. You, you don't know what loyalty is. And I say this out of love. If you get mad, get mad. It's recorded. I'll play it back to anybody you need it to play it back to. Because I ain't talking about nobody out of this building. I'm talking to every one of you in here. If you're not getting your soul fed in this place, or it's no longer your thing, hug my neck, tell me you love it, and I'll help you find a good church. Because I want you to grow. I want you to mature. I want you to walk in the blessings of God that he has for you. Amen. How many preachers say that? Whoop. <laughs> Baby, please don't leave me. Please don't go. I can't look at an empty pew. You'll leave a hole. I mean, that's what most <laughs> preachers preach. I need to put that on an hour. Well, that's off the cuff. That's pretty good. Remember that song? Don't act like you and me. Oh, he's a country bumpkin. He don't know. Don't give me that thing. That's weighing me down. But I love you. And if you love God, be loyal to yourself, to God, and to your ministry. Because, see, greater, if one can put a thousand, two can put ten thousand. 
What can 200 do? We're entering in a season of blessings. We've been through storms. We've been through battles. We've, we've been through loss. We've been through hate. We've been through all of this. But we're still standing. And I'm asking you as the pastor of this ministry or the president, whatever you stinking title you put on me, just rise. Just rise. Just rise. Enough's enough. Enough is enough. Just rise and step in our season of blessing. Let's rise up and say, not no more, devil. We've done entered in. You can stay back there in that same old mess, but I'm long gone behind it. David wasn't, wasn't rejoicing about the battle behind him. He was rejoicing the victory is ahead of him. He was rejoicing because the victory's already been won. He was dancing. He was dancing in the presence of God. When you can get to that point, you can be victorious. Because, see, a victorious Christian is a dangerous Christian. A defeated, sad, busted, and broke Christian is useless Christian. That's hard, I know. But a victorious Christian will fight a good fight of faith because they've done made up their mind that if God be for me, who can be against me? And greater is he that's within me than he that's in the world. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And will we get to walk? Angels are afraid to go because we're the blood-bought children of Jesus Christ. Maybe motley in looks, some of us. But children of God, of the Most High, that we don't have to carry the box no more because we get to enter into the Holies of Holies. Abba, Father, why aren't we dancing?